Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you five expressions to help speed up your Adobe After Effects workflow. Now, you might be asking, what is an expression? An expression is just a piece of code, a line, a couple of lines that help control different aspects of Adobe After Effects. And why they're important is because they allow you to either A, speed things up, or B, accomplish things that you couldn't accomplish on your own, or that would be so time consuming that it would take you basically infinite amounts of time so you wouldn't be able to accomplish it on your own. So, I'm gonna be teaching you five of these expressions. Um, these are great to speed up your workflow and they're great just to know by heart so that when you look at a problem, you can throw an expression in there. You could write, you know, eight characters on the keyboard and save yourself hours of work trying to get something working. So, let's get started with our first expression we're gonna learn and that is the wiggle expression. This is used widely in a bunch of different areas. One of the main areas is I actually just made a tutorial on this is that you can use it to add camera shake. So for example, if you have a shot on a tripod, and you want to add a little random movement, you can use the wiggle to do that. And so the first thing you need to do is just go up here, go to new and create a null object. And the reason we're doing this is so that we have control over the wiggle later. We don't need this for a wiggle, but we're going to create it so that we can gain the control that we want. I'm just naming it control panel. And then all we have to do is just go over here into effects and we are just going to search for slider control. So slider control right there. We're gonna click and we're gonna drag that onto control panel. Now you'll see right now it does absolutely nothing. And we are going to fix that in a second. So let's go down to our logo or whatever this is right here. And we're going to hold the alt key, the alt key and click the little scale stopwatch right there. And you'll see it goes red and then the expression place opens up. And this is where we start to have some fun. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete this out of here. We are then going to type wiggle just like that. And then the first number is how extreme, how fast the wiggle is going to be. So, you know, if you put 50 and it's on position, it's going to go between 50 pixels back and forth. And so if you put a one here, it'll go really slowly in each direction. Where if you put like a thousand, it's just going to cut back and forth really, really rapidly. So we're just going to go with five. Now, the next one, we can put anything we want here. We could put 60 and close it like that. And that's going to work perfectly fine. If we just click, click out of this, you can see it's just wiggling. The, working perfectly fine, but we have no control. We, we can't control it over time, and that's where it's powerful. So what we're gonna do is we're going to delete this 60 out of here, and then we're going to make sure that our null control panel is selected. Go back into here, make sure it's blinking on the right side of that comma there. We're going to click the pick whip, and we are just gonna drag it to our slider. Now what this does is it enables us to control the wiggle. So if we make it come up a little bit, you can see it's wiggling just like it was before because it's literally all this mumbo jumbo on the right side is why there's a pick whip. So you don't have to remember all that. What it's doing is it's taking 40 and it's moving it down here. That's it, that's all this is doing. So it's just taking whatever number is up here and it's putting it in this place. This is really powerful because you see next to this slider we have a stopwatch. So we can start it off at zero move to you know one second bring it up to a thousand where it gets really crazy and then <laughs> bring it back down to zero and you'll see so it starts off and then it just starts going absolutely crazy and then it comes back to normal because we have control over the the pick whip so first effect or the first expression is to use the wiggle really helpful with random movement and can add some really neat things. We could actually add it, let's just quickly show this. We could add a rotation, control C, this wiggle goes into anything. Click control V and now we could do another slider. We could delete this, find another slider, pick web it to another slider, but we're just gonna keep the same slider. So see now it's rotating rapidly and then it comes back to normal. So yeah, expression number one, the wiggle expression, helps you add random movement to things. Then, so step Two, the next one we're going to learn is called the loop out expression. And what the loop out expression does is this. It allows you to create some sort of animation and then have it repeat indefinitely, just like so, over and over and over. So what's neat about this one is it's just one expression right here. So we're doing it on rotation. I hold, held the Alt key to open this up. So let's just delete this out of here and let's start this from scratch. Delete this out, let's delete that, delete that, delete that keyframe. Okay, so let's say we wanted to start here and then at the one mark, we want it to rotate 
one time, and then at the two mark, we want it to rotate 10 times. We're gonna just speed up crazily. One, then really fast, then back to normal. We want it to keep doing that. We want to do it over and over and over again. So we could just control C this and, you know, control V, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste, maybe copy, paste longer, copy, paste longer. We could do that. I mean, it wouldn't actually be that much work. But if it's something, you know, really, really taxing that you want to spend a little bit more time on, what you can do is hold down the Alt key. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the expression just like we saw a little bit earlier. We're going to type loop out in parentheses. Then we're just going to type double quote, cycle, double quote, end parentheses, and then a semicolon because everything ends in semicolons. Almost everything. So then we're going to then just play it and you'll see as like magic it just goes a little bit then really fast a little bit then really fast and it will do this for 14 hours if we wanted it to because all it's doing is it's reading what the animation was and then it's just cycling it over and over and over again this is really really helpful to automate some work and not have to copy and paste keyframes and then if we wanted to change this stuff around like you know oh we want this to spin even faster we won't have to go and you know touch every single one of these keyframes. What happens if we have like a thousand of these things? We have to go and move everyone in. It's just unmanageable. So all we have to do is we have three keyframes now and we can just affect everything. And you know, we can make this look cool. We can add a little motion blur to this. And, and then now we have like slow spin becomes like a pinwheel and then slow spin. And then what's cool is that once it renders it once with this loop out, it renders it every single time because it already knows what it created. It doesn't have to think where if you put a thousand keyframes it thinks that there's something different in every single keyframe so it's going to take forever to load so this is also lower overhead to work with <laughs> it's always so cool just to watch something spin really fast and create a pinwheel sort of like fast moving wheel like that anyway loop out really great to repeat animations the next one we are going to go over is the index so we got ourselves a nice little symbol here and let's say we wanted um i don't know we're gonna take uh, we're gonna go layer new shape layer and we're just gonna draw this around it that's great we have a line but what i want it to go around the entire thing you know like to make a circle around this whole thing so let's first drag it out a little bit here on actually we'll leave it right here we'll leave it right here so what we could do is you know control c or just control duplicate it and then you know go to this one transform, rotate it back some, and you know, it's, it's, it could work like that. We'd have to do some math and it would take a long time. Again, this is where the expression comes in. So what we're gonna use is something called index. Index is whatever this number is right here. This is the index within the composition. So this is number one right here. So we're gonna go down in here to transform. We're gonna hold the Alt key on the rotation again. And then we are going to type in index, just like so. And then times, because we want it to go in 360 degrees here, times 360 divided by, we want 20 of these. So we're gonna divide it by 20. And so why does this work? The index is the one up here. Then it's gonna be multiplied by 360 divided by 20. So basically what we're doing is we're creating 20 fractions of 360 divided by 20. And let me just show you the magic of this. So you'll see this one adjusts to where it would originally be at one, because it's not zero. And then what we do is all we have to do is this. It's so easy. Control D. And just like that, we have created 20 of these things that rotate around a center common point. And um, yeah, just like that. So what we've created is this really really quick effect just by using an expression and if you really get thinking you can use these to like um really really save yourself some time especially if you get smart and kind of like move around the indexes and know something is going to be duplicated in such a way so then the index really great expression just it's it's actually just a variable really great thing to know so you can throw some expressions in there and kind of get your work moving quickly the next one we're going to go over is time. And I just created a little animation here to show you some fun that time can do. Like a little spinning thing kind of earlier, except we added just a little bit of something, something here. I just added a position movement from here down to here, added some motion blur. And what is the effect that we have created right here? So 
we go down to the rotation, we open this up. And all time is, it's another one of those variables, just like index. Time is a number, so right now it's zero. And then the next one is going to be one, the next one two, next one three. Every frame is going to change. And why that's important is because now we have something constant that changes over time. And whenever we have something that changes over time, it's going to manipulate something else. So for example, this expression is saying we want to take the rotation and we want to move the rotation by time times a thousand. So, you know, we could take this and we could pick whip this. So, you know, we could take this and click on the control panel, highlight this second part and pick whip it up to the slider right there. And so instead, now the slider has control over the spin. You'll see that the, it wasn't as nearly as much because it's only 40 instead of 1,000 this time. So, you know, now we can move this around and kind of see what it's doing. And that is so cool. So what it's doing is the advanced, the advanced part of After Effects is taking the position and then it's taking the rotation and then it's kind of figuring out what would happen with the lines as it moves forward and rotates. So it gets this like neat forward moving thing. But what's important about this is that we understand that the use of the time variable can allow us to control something over time. So we could control the position over time. So instead of having to create a bunch of little keyframes, we could just create one little expression and have something move across the screen at the same time. Anything. Time is extremely important, just like index. It allows us to control something on the screen over time. And then finally, our last one, which we're going to go into this comp to do it, should be named differently than Wiggle because we already gone over that. But anyway, the last one is a little bit of a combination, sort of a bonus. So now that you've learned a bunch, kind of what you can do with everything. So let's go into rotation here. Let's open the, yeah, there we go. Well, let's hold the Alt key just like normal. Go back. We're now into expressions. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a bracket. And this is just saying this is going to be the rotation. This is the end rotation. So we're going to type rotation in lowercase letters. Then we're going to say plus time minus endpoint in parentheses and then times our velocity. And our velocity can be a number just like you know earlier. But what we're going to do is we're going to create um, the exact same thing we've been doing. And that is we're going to grab a slider control, throw it onto our control panel. It's OK. Um, and then we're going to click this. And we're going to pick whip that last one up to the slider control. And now you see everything has resolved itself. Make sure if it doesn't resolve itself that all the parentheses are closed. You have time minus endpoint in open and then close parentheses. And then both brackets are closed and no semicolon at the end. So what this does is we can say we want it to go by 23. And now what we have is a rotation, a constant rotation over time. And this, like the others, will go on indefinitely. And you might be thinking, hey, I could use the, the loop out for this, or I could use time for this, or I might even be able to use index for this. And you are right. That is the power of expressions. There's a bunch of different ways to do a bunch of different things. And understanding and thinking like that is how you come up with ideas quickly so you can throw an expression in and keep going. So yeah, the last one is kind of a combination of all of these, what you can do with a bunch of different expressions. And if you put brackets, you can control a lot of things. For example, if we put up here in position, what it has is two brackets here. So we can go, it's number like 210 by 70, comma 70, close bracket. And then what it does is it's going to literally move that to that the number I just added. That's its new position. 210 is the X and 70 is the Y. If you're getting, you know, really thinking about this, that means we can add like, we could go time, time. And now as time goes on, you'll see it's very, very slow. The position is 2.4 because it's going by the seconds here. So we want it to move a little faster than that. So let's go by times 10, let's go 100, let's go 100, let's make it that quick. Times 50, we'll make it a slight skew. So now you see you have this slow moving object going across the screen with its X moving or its Y moving quicker than its X. No, reverse that. Anyway, that is what's 
another little expression you can do is you can create the bracket here and then kind of come up with your own stuff to make the X and the Y move over time. And like I said, now you don't have any keyframes to deal with or any of that stuff. It's just all one number that you can change. You could throw these both onto a slider control and you have a lot of fun with it. Thanks everyone for joining me for those five quick expressions to speed up your Adobe After Effects workflow. If you really like what you can do here, look up some expressions, look up tables of these things and just get, you know, experimenting. They are really strong and they can really help you become the next level Adobe After Effects. That really is what separates you from like a novice or an intermediate to an advanced is understanding and using expressions in your work. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to see, or if you got any questions or comments or, you know, suggestions for future tutorials, go ahead and throw those in the comments below. And until next time, guys, see ya.